Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. Today, I am posting this look that I did on my beautiful friend, Hannah. We got together for a little play date, let our girls play together. And I said to her, um, while we're doing this, can I do your makeup and film it just for fun? And she was game. So this is the look that I came up with. And I just wanted to do something that was a pretty soft glam with a little pop of something extra. So I did start with eyes and you saw me prep her eyelids with concealer and powder. And then the only palette I'm using is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. Such a classic. The colors that I used are Dusty Rose, Burnt Orange, and mulberry those are all matte shades from the palette i started with the lighter shades so i believe i started with burnt orange then moved to dusty rose and then mulberry and i just built up those colors little by little i started in the inner or the outer corner of her eye and slowly blended it upwards and into the crease of her eye you see me doing circular motions, some padding motions, some kind of swiping back and forth motions in the crease, and all of which just help to create that perfect blend. I still get a lot of questions about this particular blending brush. It's the one that I absolutely love. It's the Bedellium Tools 785 brush. And the reason why I love it is because it does so much of the blending for you. It's truly cut my blending time in half when I'm doing eyeshadow. Also, the fallout that I experience with eyeshadows using this brush is significantly less. Honestly, almost nothing with this brush. And this allows me a lot of the time to do the face makeup, the foundation, concealer, powder before I do the eye makeup. And I find that the whole look moves along a lot faster when I do it that way. So that really helps for working weddings, doing bridesmaids, things like that. I didn't do that today because I really didn't know what kind of look I was gonna do. I was just playing it by ear. So here you see me moving on to the shimmer shade. I use the shade Glistening in the Soft Glam palette. It's such a pretty shimmer. And I did bring it across the entire eyelid. Like I said, I was just winging it with this look. But then I decided that I didn't love the way that looked. And so then I blended those matte sh shadows some more on the outer corner, leaving the shimmer being on more like two thirds of the eye. Um, and so, yeah, it kind of <laughs> ended up being the eyeshadow style, eyeshadow look that I do so much of the time but hey I love what I love and yeah I did some things later though in the look to make it a little different and extra fun when applying shimmers I like to use a flat eyeshadow brush like this and I always spray it with a setting spray a makeup setting spray to make the brush damp and it just really intensifies those shimmers makes them more metallic looking, makes them blend on the eyelid um, so much better. And they're just so creamy and easy to work with. So that's what I always do. And then you see me blending in that outer corner again. And that is with the matte shade Mulberry. Then I took the pink shimmer shade from the palette. I'm forgetting what it's called. Um, actually, I'm gonna look at it right here. It's called Sultry. 
and I'm blending that where the matte shade mulberry and the shimmer shade glistening meets. That's a little trick I like to do just to make everything blend, like I always say. So next I'm lining her lash line with Cypress Umber. It's just a dark brown matte from the palette, just to give a little something along the lash line. When applying false lashes, it always makes it a lot easier if you do put a little bit of eyeliner on, even if it's just a little bit of eyeshadow like I did here. It just makes it a lot more forgiving when applying the falsies because you have something there to fill in kind of that gap where there can be a little gap between the false lashes and your natural lashes, if you know what I mean. So then I'm cleaning up any fallout that we did have with some micellar water on a cotton round. And I like to fold that cotton round in half and use that flat edge to sharpen up the outer portion of the eyeshadow as well. Then here I am just moisturizing her skin with the Simple Replenishing Rich Moisturizer. Such an important step in the makeup. And I make sure to apply it under her eyes as well so that they are nice and moisturized and ready to receive all the concealer and powder every, and everything that will be there. That's what I do. I used to use a separate eye cream a lot of the time on clients, but as I've done more and more research about skincare, um, the more and more I'm finding that eye creams aren't always totally necessary. A lot of the time it's just perfectly fine to use whatever moisturizer or face cream or whatever that you used on the under eye area. So then for primer, I'm using the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Such an amazing primer. I still love it and it's a primer that I really do see a difference with. That's my issue is there's so many primers I've used that it just feels like an extra step and I really don't see a difference in the way that the foundation looks or wears and it's just kind of like the idea of a primer rather than seeing actual performance from it. But this e.l.f. one I actually see results and I love it. So for foundation I mixed the Huda Beauty Faux Filter with the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Foundation. And I am applying that with this e.l.f. foundation brush. So when I'm matching, color matching the foundation on a client, I always look at their chest and arms and match more to what their color is there because most people are much more tan on their chest and arms than they are on their neck and face. A lot of that is because people are usually a lot better about applying SPF to their face and neck. Um, and so that's where I try to match it because then that just gives them more of an all over glow and then they just, you know, look better matched to the rest of their body, of course. Always want to remember the ears and down the neck. Makeup is really not just about the face. You have to make sure that everything else is blended and thought about. Here I'm even lifting up her necklace to apply a little bit down the chest. And it's not like I'm applying this like full coverage layer all over her entire neck and chest and ears and everything. I'm just kind of taking what's left on the brush and like blending a little, getting a little bit of that color, blending it out, diffusing it out so that we're not seeing where the makeup ends and your skin begins. Then I went in with a dampened beauty blender that had a little bit of that foundation on it. You want to go in and and dab some of that foundation on the Beauty Blender before you go in to blend. Otherwise, the dampened Beauty Blender is just gonna pick up the foundation that you all already applied on the face. This way, it's gonna 
just go ahead and blend everything out seamlessly. Next is cream contour. I mixed the foundation shade I created for her with some of the LA Girl Pro Concealer in the shade Beautiful Bronze. And I'm using kind of a smallish synthetic brush. It's a brush that's been discontinued from BH Cosmetics, which I'm so sad about because I love this brush set and I always would recommend it to people. But I went under the cheekbone and then I'm going around the perimeter of the hairline and it looks harsh right now but we are going to blend those edges so do not worry Then I'm grabbing that same beauty blender we were using that has a little bit of that foundation on it. And I'm using that as my tool to go around and blend the edges of the cream contour. And it's working so well because it has that little bit of foundation on it. And so it's just really softening and blending everything just how I want to. I even picked up the foundation brush a little bit too. Then I'm going ahead and contouring her chin and jawline area. It can make such a difference to go ahead and chisel out that jawline and chin area with the contour. You just wanna make sure that everything is really blended. Make sure to take a look at it and check it from different angles so that we aren't left with this really obvious looking contour that could look like a weird beard or something, you know, just way out of place. Next, I'm going in and contouring her nose. This is a little brush from AOA Studios on the Shop Miss A website, which is this website where they just sell tons of makeup and accessories and different things and everything's a dollar. And the, so this brush was a dollar, but I love it for cream contour. They, I actually really like their makeup brushes. I have a few like holy grail makeup brushes that are from Shop Miss A. But it's just perfect for going in and creating that nose contour shape. And then I also used it to contour under her lip. Then I'm taking that brush that we used for cream contour. So it does have some of that product on it and I'm just softly, softly blending the edges and then going in with the Beauty Blender. Makeup really is all about blending, as you can see, and I wanted to leave a lot of that footage and show a lot of those details and the back and forth with the different tools and whatnot so that you can see what goes into this. So I use the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Concealer. did a thin little line down the center of her nose, which I find to be just as important in the nose contour as the actual contour color. That highlight down the bridge of the nose is so important in, in that snatched look. See, I always try to do like what I see on, you know, TikTok and everything of just a little bit of concealer on the inner corner and the outer corner. And then I just always feel like it's not enough. So I go in and add a little bit more. <laughs> and 
and I am still using that same beauty blender. Just one beauty blender for the whole application. I actually use my finger to blend out that concealer down the bridge of her nose because I find that the Beauty Blender blends it out too much and kind of defeats the purpose of that narrow snatched nose look that we're trying to create. So that's why I use my little ring finger. And I also blend out that nose highlight last of all the concealer areas that we're blending so that the concealer can kind of dry down and it will stay in place even more for that narrow snatched look. Hopefully that makes sense. So I made sure that she didn't have any creases under her eyes and then I went in with the one size pressed powder foundation. I'm doing a technique called reverse baking that I learned from Patrick Starr where you first go in with the powder foundation and then you bake with the loose translucent powder or loose powder over that and it was kind of fun to switch things up and try that ultimately i think i prefer what i usually do but it's always fun to try something new so i used the huda beauty easy bake powder in the shade pound cake for the loose powder and i went over and did use the baking method Again, using that damp beauty blender to pick up the loose powder and pat it on. And then I also carve out the sides of the nose with that powder. And then I just went ahead and did it on other areas of the face that we want to highlight and bring forward as well as really lock into place. I always like to bake the smile line area to prevent smile lines. I baked the under the contour area and then I went in with I think it was Hula Benefit bronzer and I just went lightly over the areas where we powder or where we cream contoured. This just helps bring even more emphasis to it and just kind of bring it back to life after we've powdered it. Next is brows, and I think that in most of my videos, I tend to really kind of skip over the brows. I like show that it's happening, but then kind of skip through and you don't actually see what goes into creating a brow. So I thought I'd leave in more of the footage here so that you can actually see what I do. And the method that I like to use is an angled brow brush this one is another one that is discontinued from BH Cosmetics. I'm so sorry. And I use a powder and it's actually an eyeshadow palette that I use. It's a Morphe palette. It's another one that I think is discontinued. I'm so set in my ways, you guys, I'm sorry. But any brow powders or eye any eyeshadows that are a very cool toned type of brown, um, you don't want to go with any like warm browns typically because they can just look really warm. Um, you typically want to go more ashy. They'll work just fine. So you see me even um, taking that spoolie and like moving her real brow hairs down or up so that we can really get in there and make sure they're nice and filled in. And there you have it. I kind of skipped on this other brow, but you got to see the process of creating a brow. I think brows are absolutely everything in a makeup look. I almost feel like you could have the most gorgeous, flawless, sculpted, perfect makeup application, but if the brows are wonky or just not there, 
In my mind, it almost like discredits the makeup look. Does anybody else feel that way? I just think that brows are so very important. Okay, now I'm putting some of that cypress umber under her eyes and then blending it out with that mulberry shade with a little pencil brush. This pencil brush is from Morphe. Then I went in with that sultry shade, that shimmery pink from the palette and applied that shimmer on the inner portion of her lower lash line. I rarely think to apply shimmers on the lower lash line and I really need to do it more often because it's beautiful. So now I'm using the B Lashed White Lash Adhesive. I'm applying it on her lash line, on the inner corner, outer corner, and a little bit on the middle. And then I also applied the glue all across the lash band of the lashes we used. And the style we used are the style Grace from B Lashed. It's a style that I really love. They're def they definitely make your eyes pop, but they're not over the top in my opinion. And they have a really nice curl to them. So they really open up your eyes and are just easy to apply. B lash lashes are so comfortable to use and you can reuse them over and over and over. I personally love them. I do have a video all about how to apply lashes on a client, so I'll be sure and link that down below for you. So for blush, I'm using my current obsession. There's a little girl in the background. Okay, here's the part of the video where <laughs> the girls had been playing on their own long enough and they were done and so they came in and hung out with us and it just is what it is, you guys. You're gonna see cute little kids playing in the background. Um, anyways, this blush, it's the liquid blush from She, from She Glam. It's in the shade Love Cake and it is to die for. And I think it costs like $4. It's so beautiful. And then I just went in with a little bit of that contour underneath to make sure it was well blended and applied some mascara. Top and bottom lashes. And then I just, oh, I try so hard, but I always seem to get some mascara in that inner corner. So what I did, I know that the footage is gonna cut out, but I did um, go ahead and do my best to remove that mascara smear. I let it kind of dry first and then used a spoolie to get rid of it. And then I took the shade Tempura, which is like a satin, bright cream colored shadow from the Soft Glam palette and I, went over her inner corners with that and I loved that as an inner corner highlight rather than a usual shimmer that I use. Okay, so for the highlight on her cheeks and nose and Cupid's bow, I used Cookie from Benefit and then I did use a little bit of the shade, I think it's called Pretty Posh from the Jaclyn Cosmetics Bougie Rouge palette. Just a little bit of that matte blush more on the apples of her cheeks. Okay, then I had some fun. I went in with the e.l.f. liquid glitter eyeshadow. First I used the shade um, Flirty Birdie. It's a light pink. And then I transitioned it into the shade Copper Pop to do a little pop of glitter on the lower lash line. And I need to do that more often because it is so pretty. It's like when she's looking down, the eyeshadow's you know, really pretty and then she opens her eyes and her eyes are gorgeous and there's just this pop of glitter that is just so pretty and makes her eyes sparkle. For lips, I did the Dose of Colors Truffle Liquid Lipstick with a nude gloss. I did a nude liner in her waterline and she went from naturally beautiful to beautifully glam. Thank you so much, Hannah, for letting me do your makeup and thank you so much for watching. I love you and I hope you have a great day.